Good evening. The June 26, 2019 meeting of the Long Branch City Council will now come to order. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Here. Mr. Vieira? Here. Dr. Vogt? Here. Dr. Selly? Here. Mrs. Wittes? Here. Um, please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Certification. I'm not going to read that. I hereby certify this meeting has been published in the newspaper in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and posted as required by law. Thank you. And I apologize for the delay in us coming out this evening. Um, at this time, I'd like to have a moment of silence for Detective Sergeant James Mazza, who passed away. Uh, he was with the police department for 23 years and well known by most many of us. So I'd like to have a moment of silence for him, please. Thank you. Okay. At this time, um, we're going to present our employee of the month for July. Um, Joanne Mattea, please come forward. Joanne began her employment with the City of Long Branch over 32 years ago. Since starting her employment with the City, she has always held the role as switchboard operator. Joanne receives every call that comes into the City and directs it to the right department. To be successful in this role, you must be knowledgeable, kind, and patient, all characteristics that Joanne exemplifies each and every day. Joanne is the type of employee that takes extreme pride in her work. As the first response and face of the city, she listens to each call, making sure that every question reaches the right department. Joanne also serves as the directory when someone first walks into City Hall and shows great care when meeting people. The city of Long Branch is extremely lucky to have Joanne as an employee. Her dedication, professionalism, and heart shines through with every call or person she helps. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oops. I, oops. I, would, I would like to thank everyone who has made this award possible for me tonight. And I would like to thank the mayor, administrator, and council. I hope I have served you well. Oh, thank Absolutely. You. Thank Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations. I need a motion to approve the minutes of June 12, 2019. So moved. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. Consideration of ordinances, public hearing, final consideration. This is the second reading of Ordinance 11 19, entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 325, Section 26, Schedule 2. Parking prohibited at all times in certain streets of the Code of the City of Long Branch. This ordinance was introduced on June 12, 2019. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
If there is anyone in the audience that has a comment to make regarding this ordinance, please step to the microphone and state your name and address clearly for the record. You will have five minutes and may only speak once. Kind of. Pure Village? This is for the... Uh, I'll tell you what, for uh, Ernest Mignoli, um, Asbury Park, New Jersey, if I can use some of my time for you to explain to me the ordinance. This one's parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. I'm sorry? Parking, which is going to be prohibited on certain streets. Parking is prohibited on certain streets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Mr. Mignoli, just so you know, this is, has to do with a parking change on Dudley Street right. in Long Branch because there were some traffic issues. So that's what this ordinance is about. Oh, okay. So hopefully that's what you'll be speaking about. Well, that's only what I'll speak about. So, um, so the city um, loses some public access parking is that the result uh, no i mean i, no, I, I think nothing to do with public yeah access it has nothing parking. to do with public access. i'm sorry we're just changing parking regulations in oh you're changing the parking time. regulations yeah, that's all. oh from can i ask from what to what on my time do you want me to read you the ordinance okay it's it's pretty extensive I, well no no i mean just in in layman's terms like what was it and, and what are you looking yeah, to well, change? That's what it is. We're changing a, a number of different parking requirements in a, on a number of different streets. It, they're all set out in the ordinance, I think. Is yeah. Back in the room. Well, this, this, the this one is specific to Dudley Street. Oh, this is the but Dudley But then Street. there are others. Okay. Yes. There are others, yes. So Dudley is, is what? We're, we're increasing? Dudley, Dud, Dudley is off Broadway just before the railroad track. So if you just went out this okay. way, your first street on your right yeah. is Dudley Street. Okay. And And what's happening is... To accommodate the, I guess, the residents so that they're... No, no, it's not accommodating the residents. Well, what is My that? understanding is that people cut, across, cut, a, cut around Dudley Street, and you, George, you tell me if I'm incorrect, uh, and make a left on Broadway, and so the, the, the um, parking on both sides... There is no parking on, on one side... And they've extended that, I think, a couple hundred feet to Hampton Avenue right. because there's an issue of people, a, a safety issue of making that turn. Right. So I guess everyone within, uh, what's the requirement, 200 feet has to be uh, notified? No. No? On zoning ordinance. Not, not on a zoning. Yeah. It, it's strictly, we do it all yeah. the time, Mr. McDonald. Okay. Well, uh, uh, you know why uh, I ask, and again, it's about this ordinance, it just seems... Uh, as I witness here, whatever ordinance we talk about, but now we're talking about this one, um, I, I just find it odd that, like, there's never anyone here to ask any question or make any comment. And, you know, I, I consider myself an outsider, but I'll make a comment because I was born here and I'd like to know. But, you know, it, it, it just seems odd that there's, you know, the place is empty all the time. All these ordinances come up and you vote yes, and that's the end of it. I mean... Where's all the people on Dudley? Yeah, again, Mr. Mr. Magnolia, all right, this well, is about this particular well, no, ordinance. Well, I'm saying about, is it Dudley? It's Dudley Street, yes. Okay, so I, I'm asking, is anyone from Dudley Street here? I don't, I can't, I can't I don't think so. That. I mean, that's what I'm saying is odd. It just seems you use this ordinance, or I won't talk about other ones, but here it is, a change in parking on someone's block where they probably live. And there's no one here. Okay. Okay. How much time do I have? Two and a half, sir. Two and a half minutes. Yes. Sir. I don't think I need it. So uh, you're just trying to accommodate, I guess, and cut down people doing odd things coming off and going onto Broadway, and you're going to try and limit that somehow. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I need a motion to close. 
So moved. Second. Second. This is the third reading of Ordinance 11 19, entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 325, Section 26, Schedule 2, Parking Prohibited at All Times on Certain Streets of the Code of the City of Long Branch. I need a motion to adopt on third and final reading and advertise according to law. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. This is the second reading of Ordinance 12-19, entitled an ordinance entitled Chapter 325, Vehicles and Traffic. This ordinance was introduced on June 12, 2019. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. If there is anyone in the audience that has a comment to make regarding this ordinance, please step to the microphone and state your name and address clearly for the record. You will have five minutes and may only speak once. Which one is this now? Huh? This is ordinance 12-19. 12 what? 12-19. 12-19. What page is that on? Boy, I'm really out of the loop. 12-19. What? There's no separate number for the page. I heard a saying once. Let's just pass it and we'll read it later. 13-19. Which one? I'm sorry? 12-19. 12-19. Resolution order. order for Can you tell me what page it's on? It's it's 12-19. I'm not sure. It's what my you're talking time, about so I don't mind giving it. Okay. It's on page two. Page Consideration two. Consideration of ordinances. Public hearing 12-19. 12. -19. 12 oh, I see how you do. Ordinance tells you vehicles and traffic. Okay. Uh, I guess on my time. Uh, is that a broad term? What does that mean? Vehicles and traffic. So you're amending an ordinance, or creating one, or nullifying one, or Ratifying one or voting on one or or it's actually doing all of, all of those things. We're adding some new regulations. We're changing some and we're deleting some. And the specifics of which are we're only all set forth in the ordinance. Which and I apologize for referring to it before. It's set off in the ordinance and I don't know how many pages is this, Mary? Eighty something, sir. 80 pages. 80, 80 plus. All right, so this is a and it's in the back about. of the room now? Yep. yep. Now? Yes, it's hanging up. It's yeah. yep. They have been, yep. and it was published in the newspaper. It was on the website, and it's been posted here for... What was it, in the link? Asbury Park Press. Asbury Park Press. Oh, okay. All right, so um, I guess without seeing it, it's comprehensive. Um, ordinance entitled Chapter 3, 2... Five vehicles and traffic. All right. Uh, I don't know. Is that like made for the average person to understand? Or well, what's the impetus here? In other words, you're trying to create more safety, stop people from speeding, add parking, take away parking, add traffic signs, take away traffic signs, make one ways, make two ways, make double yellow lines, or all of the above. Yeah, you, you it's an 80-page ordinance. You have to go back and take a look. I don't, I, I, I'm, I, you have well, to go back. Okay. And, I'm not, I can't summarize it in. Okay. In, in Can I ask you a question then? Why is the ordinance before the vote? Why? What, what were the complaints that led the council to go into private and create? A comprehensive review of the, par mostly the parking ordinances done by the police department and they made a presentation at a work session. If you had been here, you could have seen the presentation and of all the changes. And this was the ordinance that came. It was introduced last week. I missed it. It was introduced the... two weeks ago, and um, it's on for adoption. And this is the form. Just so you know, it's not done to be confusing. This is the form of ordinance that the state of New Jersey prescribes for traffic ordinances. Yeah. This is what they look like. Well, I, I just and by like, the way, a lot of this ordinance has been in effect before. There's only some changes. So it was actually presented by the police department. Correct. And, and who on the police department presents that? I think it was Lieutenant Shirley who made the presentation that night. I think you're right. No, I think you're right. He's traffic. Mr. I think. Mignoli, this is about resident parking on certain streets. Correct. There were, there were uh, concerns in certain areas throughout the city 
uh, where uh, residents wanted resident parking. We did some surveys in different pockets of the city, and we are currently addressing, I think, two or three streets right now. So you may put up resident-only or limited resident parking from the, the, 5 p.m. to 9 a.m.? That's correct. So the process, the process was that surveys were done, mm -hmm. an analysis was done of the survey. I understand. Those recommendations were made to the city council and to, to myself and to the administration. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we, we uh, went ahead and made some preliminary decisions, mm -hmm. which you're seeing here this evening. There are more potentially, but you know we're we're starting right now. Yeah. So it, 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 it's it basic. If you're asking, you know, where was the seed? The seed came out of residents requesting resident parking as an option, mm -hmm. and so it's something that we looked at and made a decision here with this particular ordinance. I think. And well, just so you know, the next ordinance, if you want to come up. Is the uh, is the free municipal parking? Is that yes, right? Exactly. So, in other words, when we decided back in whenever it was March or April, when the city council established a free resident parking in the in the old Chandler and Maps, that didn't exist. So we had to adjust that by ordinance as well. So that's the next one. If you were going to inquire about that, and I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I think I would make a comment that uh, I always consider. Asbury Park and Long Branch going through the same thing relative to parking and ordinances and but what I, but what everybody finds is that a lot of the decisions are made that's a five or a one minute morning. What is that? I'm sorry, Mr. Moulton. Time's up? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Um, I need to motion to close. So moved. Second. This is the third reading of Ordinance 12-19, entitled An Ordinance Entitled Chapter 325, Vehicles and Traffic. I need a motion to adopt on third and final reading and advertise according to law. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Ms. Quittis? <clears throat> yes. This is the second reading of Ordinance 13-19, entitled An Ordinance in an ordinance entitled Chapter 244, Parking Lots and Meters. This ordinance was introduced on June 12, 2019. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If there's anyone in the audience that has a comment to make regarding this ordinance, please step to the microphone and state your name and address clearly for the record. You will have five minutes and may only speak once. I need a motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is the third reading of Ordinance 13-19, entitled an ordinance entitled Chapter 244, Parking Lots and Meters. I need a motion to adopt on third and final reading and advertise according to law. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. This is the second reading of Ordinance 14-19, entitled An Ordinance Amending an Ordinance Establishing Titles and Setting Salaries for Certain Employees of the City of Long Branch for the year 2019. This ordinance was introduced on June 12, 2019. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If there's anyone in the audience that has a comment to make regarding this ordinance, please step to the microphone and state your name and address clearly for the record. You will have five minutes may only speak once. Vincent Laporte, 33 Ocean Terrace, Long Branch. In the body of the ordinance, it states the purpose of the salary ordinance is to determine minimum and maximum salaries only. And the titles and positions should be considered as one ordinance, not by category. Under non-union full-time positions, we have two categories. Director of Public Safety, for 2019, the minimum 75,000, the maximum $207,399. We have the Chief of Police, minimum 30,000, 
maximum $201,668. I'd like to ask the administrator and the CFO, what is the amended change on the Director of Public Safety and the Chief of Police after stating those figures? What is the amended change? Yes, the ordinance is a style, amending an ordinance, establishing title, yeah. and setting salaries. Were these two categories affected? <coughs> and how were they affected to be included in this ordinance? 2%. They're 2%. They reflect 2% increases, Mr. LaFour. I'll ask the question to the CFO again. Is there a 2% increase across the board on all titles on this? No, sir. Where's the 2%? occurring in the categories listed under this ordinance? 2% occurs in all categories except mayor and council. All categories except the mayor and council. The mayor and council remain steady, is that correct? That's correct. All right, then why were they included in an ordinance amending titles and setting salaries? Because we set the salaries for 2019. That's what the ordinance does. Yeah, but they're not being amended. The mayor and council are not being amended. Why were they included in an ordinance that's amending? They're being set. Yeah, but not amended. Correct. They're being set, but there's no change from last year. Correct, but they're being set for this year. Director of Public Safety and Chief of Police are getting a 2% increase. I'd like to ask the administrator and the CFO again. Does the Director of Public Safety exist in the city of Long Branch and is it currently filled? There is no one holding that position. There is nobody holding that position. Correct. Thank you. I need him. Are you coming up? Thank you, Ernest Mignoli. Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, so in and around the time uh, of, I believe it was uh, the election time of uh, 2018, relative to these positions and salaries, there was no chief until after, uh, oh, I'm sorry, just before the election, there was the creation of a chief of police after 50 years. Am I correct? I think I am. In the 2017, yes. Right, but it's just before this administration yes. was elected. Yes. The previous Within a year prior. Exactly. And w one of the problems that everyone has is the uh, top-heavy excessive salaries of the Long Branch police, of course, culminating upon the chief of police. And uh, I guess... When you announce this and you vote on it, you must realize that there was just uh, an investigation started relative to the Long Branch police. And I don't think that's limited and will not include uh, across the purview like a public safety director acting as a police officer and thus creating lawsuits against the city, uh, uh, heavy salaries from rank of sergeant and up far and out of proportion with anywhere in the state. And then, of course, you're giving a chief a 2% raise when, in fact, some people have opened and looked into the records of when that mayor and council created the position of chief, established a salary, and then put someone in who was the least qualified, meaning you're rewarding someone who had the least time in as a captain, who had the most charges or allegations against him was Mr. the least. Mignoli, may, yeah. may, I, may I say it's one a, it's thing? It's about the salary. Please say whatever you like, you know, at the next public amount. But I just wanted to remind you, this is really just about setting the salary for 2019. Well, yeah, I'm talking so about this. I, I just want to let you know okay. that's all. Well, I'm talking about the salary of the public safety director, okay. Okay. which, which sure. now magically, I mean, who was the salary? Fair enough. Fair enough. So now we get the creation of, of a chief after 50 years who comes to that position with only six months in grade. I guess everyone on council knows what that means, right? In the state of New Jersey, 
you have to be a captain, and I think the city, current city manager knows that, you have to be a captain for one year in grade. And he was only six months because he gave up to be a public safety director. And you say, well, you're talking about old history. But no, you're not, because now when you talk about these raises, you're talking about Jason Roebuck. The question is, how does he keep escalating in every way, power, authority, salary, when in fact he's on a very, very troublesome pedestal? I don't, I don't get it. And, and why the rewards and money all the time? And of course, we all know that this far does not include overtime. If the chief comes out for 10 minutes at night, I think he's paid for four hours. It's, I mean, he's making a lot of money. I know we shouldn't talk about that. Chief doesn't get overtime. He doesn't get overtime? No. What does he get when he comes? He doesn't get comp time or anything? All right, that, that's certainly not my understanding, but if you say it, uh, I'll, I'll certainly check it. So, so, you do, uh, so you're, you're given a 2% increase to a position. I don't know, who was the last public safety director? Was it the chief, was chief the of last, police? Uh, chief Robot. Chief Robot. Was the public I, safety director. Am I, am I wrong? But now, again, I'm talking about salary and the chief and the public safety director. But am I wrong in saying that you brought in a former police chief from Eatontown, you made him the city manager, which came with, you gave him the public safety director car. I thought he was the public safety director. No, he's the business yeah. administrator. And was never, never was compensated or held the title of public safety director. That's correct. Business administrator. So all this time, there's been no public safety director? That's correct. Right. And who drives the public safety director car? The one that Hayes had. Where did that go? That was made for the public safety director. Still assigned to fire prevention. That was an unmarked car, uh, interceptor equipped for him. It's who drives fire that? Prevention. Who? It's in fire prevention. Oh, now it's in fire. Okay. You don't mind me asking. the fire. No, no. I, it has nothing because, to do with this ordinance, but he was the fire all, official. I always, I always complained about the chief and the public safety director. Mr. McNally, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. I need a motion to close. So moved. All in favor? Aye. This is the third reading of Ordinance 14-19 entitled An Ordinance Amending an Ordinance Establishing Titles and Setting Salaries for City of Long Branch for the year 2019. I need a motion to adopt on third and final reading and advertise according to law. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are no ordinances for introduction this evening. Um, at this time, I need a motion to open the public portion of the meeting for all comments. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? If anyone in the audience has any comments to make, please step to the microphone and state your name and address clearly for the record. You will have five minutes and may only speak once. Good evening, Mayor Pomona and members of the, of the council. Anita, could you lower the microphone oh. just a tad? Oh, Thank okay. You. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Pomona and members of the council. My name is Anita Clavering. I live on 161 Garrett Drive. I am here tonight to talk about an initiative by State Senator Venko Powell a shimmyman, Arico Towing, and a shimmy woman, John Downey, called Every Kid Counts, which is deaf taxpayers paying the bill for much needed special education services and programs the state will be responsible. Last night at Coffee with the Mayor, Dr. Vogt told me that she was going to talk about every kick counts at the council meeting, and I was so happy that she, she discussed this. I immediately worked on some notes from the information I received about every kick count that I had when I came home. According to statements made by Senator Gopal, districts were called to give kids with, with special needs the best education possible, and in many cases, 
They are gang squeezed by the state to cover these costs alone. While we deprive students with special needs of the funding they need to succeed, children across New Jersey are forced to struggle and compete for vital funding and resources. When it's clearly unfair to force local taxpayers to total the cost for these expensive programs, it's time for someone else to step in. That's someone that's the same in Jersey. And it comes with the potential for millions of dollars in extraordinary special education funding. If our state just devotes a much heavier chunk of the budget to meet the needs of children in special education programs, we can give strong school districts and their students a fine chance to succeed. Increased funding for education is very important to students with special needs. I strongly believe that the Advocate County Initiative will, will make the state responsible for increased funding without putting the burden on taxpayers. I would like very much to work with Dr. Vogt on Advocate Counts so students with disabilities can get the best special education with the funding that will hopefully be implemented. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Requesting one minute notification, Vincent Lepore, 33 Ocean Terrace, Long Branch. Following through on the last council meeting in reference to the Sephardic Torah at 213 Lenox Avenue, I submitted an OPRA, Open Public Records Request, on a certificate of occupancy. I received an answer on a fire code, certificate of inspection, clearly noticing it expired April 1st, 2019. We're now going on three months overdue was such an important inspection. We're watching. The OPRA was resubmitted again for the certificate of occupancy, and we'll wait and see. To be continued. Resolutions on this evening's agenda, 128.19, appointing Mr. Dangler as council president, and resolution 129, appointing Dr. Selly as council vice president, I'm requesting a no vote. I oppose it. When you took leadership, your leadership was to uphold the public trust on the new tax abatement, 30-year tax abatement for Kushner companies. You betrayed that public trust. Therefore, you're not worthy of holding the positions of council president and vice president. Resolution 141.19 on the legal services pool. Reno and Cochran. Minchello. I'm requesting a no vote again on the Kushner new 30 year tax abatement and the way that was handled and run past the public, betraying the public trust. Resolution 142.19, again a no vote. Contractual legal services as labor attorney, Raynon Cochran and Minchello. Resolution 145.19, McManahan, Scotland, again, no, for misrepresentation of financials. Resolution 149.19, contract for redevelopment condemnation matters, McManahan, Scotland, Bauman again, I'm requesting a no vote again. Resolution 154.19, resolution. Authorizing execution of redevelopment agreement for Oceanfront Broadway redevelopment plan. This is Kushner Companies on the oceanfront. It's interesting, knowing the history of convicted felon developer Charles Kushner and Jared Kushner, and nobody needs to be educated on the media coverage of both. But in this developer's agreement on page 7, item number 4, I'm going to quote, such entity and its principals, directors, officers, partners, stockholders, and members 
individually have not been convicted in a criminal proceeding, excluding traffic violations or other similar minor offenses. And to the best of the knowledge and belief of the principals, directors, officers, partners, and shareholders, and members of such entity, is not a target or a potential witness in a criminal investigation. End quote. I want the public to take note of the media, the federal government, your Congress, and the targeting of Kushner companies and Jared Kushner, along with Charles Kushner, convicted felon developer. I do not believe this developer's agreement was made in good faith on behalf of the people of Long Branch, and therefore I'm requesting a no vote. Mr. Lepore, you have one minute. Thank you. At the last meeting, I made a comment about the police department, and I made a correlation of a former police officer, Charles King, and related him to LBPD's version of Serpico. Apparently, a comment was made by Officer Hazel, stating that I should be doing my homework. Officer Hazel, now a lieutenant. I'd like to publicly state, Mr. Hazel, Lieutenant Hazel, I've done my homework on LBPD. I've been victimized. I've exposed wrongdoing in LBPD. Yeah, Lieutenant Hazel, if you have a problem with Serpico of NYPD, or you have a problem with Charles King being correlated as Serpico of LBPD, you can come to this podium and voice your dissent. However, I will remind you, Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Lieutenant Hazel, where were you when dumpster gate occurred in LBPD? Criminal racketeering in LBPD. Where were you and what did you do to expose it? Good evening, Patty Verrocki, 246 Jerome Avenue, Oakhurst. Um, I really wasn't planning to come up, but um, I decided... Patty, could you raise it a little bit? I'm sorry. Thank you. I decided just to ask one question. Um, has Long Branch ever looked into having a civilian review board um, or a, you know, a committee of you know, citizens? Uh, I know the public safety director position is supposed to be a civilian position, correct? Correct. So um, if there is no public safety director, uh, is there, you know, some sort of a, a go-between um, committee or group of people or a person that, um, you know, has that ever been looked into or potential to be? Patty, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Are you asking? I'm basically asking, has Long Branch or this administration ever thought to have a civilian review board to overlook the police department, fire department, the council, or perhaps the other departments, you know, just uh, as with far, some of As far as I know, as long as I've been on council, we have not. Okay. But that type of activity or knowledge would be something that the public safety director would be doing, correct? Which now there's no longer that I mean, position. Apples and oranges, right? Yeah, I think it is. It's different. I, I it's think, different. Yeah. Okay. It's, I think you're talking about something different. Okay. And uh, the other quick question, I guess, comment is the algae attack in Takanasi Lake. Um, Stan told me earlier is going to be taken a look at. Um, and uh, is there any funds available if the lake were to be needing of dredging? Or where would that, is there grants? Is there some way that, if that were to be the problem? I'm, you know, Patty, I apologize. I'm not. Would sure. there be funds if the lake eventually needed to be dredged? If that was the cause? Well, of we're, we're, you know, we have met with the county a couple of times, mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's certainly something that we, you know, would like to see happen. Uh, I don't know, George, you want to comment? You've been having the conversations more than with yes. me. Uh, we've had discussions, uh, as the mayor said, with the county. Our, our city engineer has been doing some research, and we're getting some preliminary costs. We do want to move ahead and continue the dredging that was done previously. Um, we haven't put our capital budget together yet. We've had some preliminary estimates, and quite frankly, we're looking at basically a two-phase process because the dredge spoils will have to dry. They'll have to sit for some time. So we're hoping to split the costs over two different capital budgets. So we are looking at that as we put our capital budget together. Okay. And we're not sure of the amount because apparently, and again, this gets very technical. Stan, maybe you can chime in too, but there's, you know, there needs to be some testing done on what's being yeah, dredged sure. and what we can do with that material and so forth. And depending on the outcome of those tests, Stan, I don't know, am I? Correct. Correct. Once we do the test, then we'll find out where we're going and what it costs to be for investigation. So we're trying to find out as much as we can before we make any plans. Yeah, and okay. present it to council and see right. what the situation is. Yeah. As far as the algae, we are going to address that tomorrow morning. We've got a whole bunch of things inside hydraulics. Is Dave in on that? I'm just talking as a patient. Okay. Dave Sellers. Yeah. And that's Princeton Hydraulics. All right. Thank you. I don't know. Mr. Sellers, do you have anything to add on that? Were you part of those discussions? Okay, and um, I guess one other point I'd like to make um, when Mr. Mignoli was talking about, um, you know, the, the parking and n not being aware of the ordinance and so forth, I actually had a chance to look at that pamphlet, I guess, for lack of better words, um, and I found it very hard to understand what were the actual changes that were occurring. So unless you knew that street's particulars, uh, is there a spot in there? Like if you wanted just to zoom in and see, well, what's being done on so-and-so street? Is that the one on Dudley? Is it like user-friendly? Is there a user, the more user-friendly version? Are you asking the Dudley Street parking? Well, the parking and yeah. stuff in general. I, the, an the answer is, and I apologize that it wasn't in our, I didn't have it in our packet or I would have told you that. But the clerk's office has the edited one, so you mm -hmm. can take a look at it in a, like a red line version that can show you every change. Okay. So as a, as a citizen, that would be the only way for us to go see exactly what changes were actually made? Uh, yes. And, and as a matter of fact, when I looked at it, uh, my suggestion to the clerk's office would be to include that in our, it was included on, it was in my packet in the first reading, mm -hmm. but it, it so you, you, you might have seen it then, but if not, it should be included in the second one. So, the, and I agree with you, the red line version should be in there so that you could see, you know, what sometimes changes? you have an ordinance that's 20 pages long and we only changed five words. Yeah. You, without doing a compare, you'd be hard to, you know. Exactly. In the future, we'll, yeah. we will, that's a good suggestion though. Right. And I, I agree with you, we'll, right. we'll do that. But you can, in this circumstance, you can take a look at the clerk's office and okay. she'll, she'll tell you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And, and Patty, just so, just so you know, I, I'm just kind of repeating what, what Lou said, but but it is minimal. So on the, like I said, when Mr. Brignoli was asking about the parking, the change was was uh, simply the free parking. And I think that on the other, it's simply Melrose and Marine Terrace and uh, one other, right? Ocean Ave. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Mary, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. You're welcome. Avery Grant, 405 Atlantic Avenue. I wanted to thank you for the support that was received for the car show. Uh, it was a very big success. So Lee Green worked very, very hard on that program. I'm glad to see that it's come back and I was able to get him some sizable funding to help sponsor the band and a lot of other things of that nature. So I think that was a good sign for the city thank for you. to have that type of activity. Thanks, Mr. And I would like could, you raise the, could you raise the microphone just a little bit? Thank I'd, you. I'd also like for you to continue to look for summer employment for the uh, our youth. Now, I don't know if they still have the summer youth employment program we had in East Orange where we hired 
over 200. I had 100 of them working for me four hours a uh, day during the summer. And uh, it was all federal fundings. So I would hope that we could, you know, look and see what kind of funding is available because we have kids here who, who would like to work and do things. But I, again, I think it's very positive to see the auto show and there are a lot of ribbon cuttings. So apparently people are coming into town, which is a positive aspect too. So let's don't forget our, our young people. And the last thing is that it irritates me when I see that big sign on the new buildings, a 30 year pilot, but there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, I, as a, as a C4 explosive man in the army when I first came in, I feel like blowing it down, but I won't. All right, God bless you. Mr. Grant, yes. I just want to say in regards to the youth and summer jobs, all of the applicants, all the applications I know for the Department of Public Works that were submitted, um, our Long Branch students, youth were, were hired. That's good. I'm just saying the numbers. We had over 250. I had 100 myself. I even got them out there to show them how to use a street broom. That was great. <laughs> then those monies might not be available. But uh, yeah, those but we had what we had was a coalition because we had our legal. We had a whole legal department. We had planning. We had the engineering, public works, and we went through any program that the government had, state, federal, whatever. We've got a part of it because we were ready to move on it. But we also had a planning thing that we said, let's look for money to do this. And as you know, with the school district, that's why we were successful. Uh, uh, Mr. Farina knew that the state was going to have money for school building. And he saying, came to the board, you were there. Yeah. Can we buy the Proctor lot? Then he said, can we buy, uh, hire an architect to develop some plans? And we were first on the line, and they wanted to be successful. So they said, okay, we're going to build your schools. They kept ahead of that. So that's what I'm saying to you. You got the plan, but you need a team here. And I know you don't have a legal session, but you do have planning. You have public works, and you don't have city engineer either. But these things you can do and plan and get things done because agencies want to be successful if they have a program. Uh, and they say, if you're going to run it. And, again, that's why the school was good under – the board and with uh, Mr. Farina, they knew it would be a success. But again, thank you on that auto show. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Linda Swinby and I live at uh, 157 Summit Avenue Gregory School Apartments. I want June, July 1st is Monday, one year. And I say that to say this. I thank the mayor and the council for all the good work you've done. I've been up July, uh, June 8th. You had the dedication for the wheelchair accessible space down on North Bath. And that same day, I walked into the Wave Resort, grabbed a fruit cup, whatever, and sat there. And for about 15 minutes, it was a warm and friendly place. We have Long Branch people that, young men and women that are working there. It's a cool, just a fun place. It's warm, makes you feel comfortable. There's going to be four restaurants. If I say that, to say this, it's tourist friendly. It's for everybody. I've talked to people that have told me that they're making it for everybody in the community and people coming in. And even a hamburger place. Wow. I think that's pretty cool on one side of the building. But the point is, I'm saying that because this is just two things that the mayor and you, your council has done for the community. You're, you've done a great job in you know, I know it's only going to continue. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. It's just one year. Look at what you've accomplished. And there's more to come. I know that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Linda. Is there anyone else? I'll go.
Uh, hi, Ernest Mignoli, Asbury Park. So I just want to pick up where we left off the last meeting. After I finish speaking, usually uh, either the mayor or some council person wants to make a comment that I can't respond to. And uh, at the end of the last meeting, uh, it was stated on the record that uh, Holy Smoke's uh, use of alcohol, cigars, unlimited parties in terms of amounts of people, and occupation of a church property is all legal. Now, I just want the public to know, and hopefully people see this as it's broadcast, that that's very far from the truth. Uh, first of all, I've been opering Holy Smoke Cigar Club for five years. They've never had any paperwork, ever, until I was able to get some of it in the newspaper about faulty inspections in Long Branch, and then all of a sudden, the last... Uh, City Manager, Mr. Hayes, uh, Mr. Guzzi, uh, Mr. Muzi, who works for the church, who rents Holy Smokes, who rents Holy Smokes, they put together this package of, I don't want to use the word phony, but how about made up? Made up documents, made up fire inspections, made up uh, smoke regulations, made up food, alcohol, made up EPA disposal, uh, made up entrance, use of a fire escape for entrance. No certified uh, amount of occupancy. They're going way over up there. That's a horrible building. It's got lead paint dripping all over the ground. The, half the metal on it is rusting. It's filled with lead. They got oil tanks leaking in the basement and outside. And then, you know, they worked this deal out with the church, like, hey, we want to keep partying up here. We like it. Cops, firemen, we're having a ball, smoking, gambling, everything. And then you got the nerve to tell, excuse me, I don't want to use the word nerve. You have the, uh, how about audacity, to say that that's legal? I mean, where are we? That's my church. It's a disgrace what's going on there. Where do you see July 4th, what they have planned? Big tent outside, alcohol, cigars, loud music, people coming from all over. You know what you ought to do, Mayor? Surround that place with breathalyzers. And as they come out, you know, start arresting some of your cops and firemen. And that, that's my piece. I'm tired of these comments that you're making it out like we're running a, a, a baby farm here in Long Branch. This is a pernicious environment, a lot of crime. A lot of police excessive force, a lot of corruption, uh, uh, problems in bars. I mean, if, if you can imagine what people are saying about you, Mayor, in these bars after these meetings, you might think differently about the people that you sit up there with. I mean, it's horrendous about you, your brother, about Long Branch, about everything. And look, I'm going to say it because not because you're listening to me, but because this gets broadcast and a lot of people watch it. And everybody knows what's going on in Long Branch. And, you know, this whole group was elected to, what was it word? Clean up. Long Branch first, remember? Remember the brooms downstairs? Everybody's still here. Who's gone? We had to work like, anyway, I don't want to, how much time do I have left? Please. A minute and 24. A minute 24? Yes. Okay. Will you give me a 30 second more? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, here, here's an example. Uh, thankfully, you fired the Ansel Grammarin law firm after, I don't know what, 25 years? Okay. How many people know right now and then that Mr. Aaron sits, who used to sit there, sits on the board of Channel 12, sits on the board of the Asbury Park Press? Do you realize when we send documented problems in Long Branch to press, I work part-time as press, they disregard it. But anything, police corruption, 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 crime, anything, sex crimes, kids being uh, stabbed, uh, uh, Long Branch, too, everything is dumbed down. He is on the board. And he's on a lot of other things. So even though you fired him, Mr. He's not, you have 30 seconds. thank you, he's not going away. He's, he's, and his law firm is damaging Asbury. They're still in Asbury. We can't get rid of them. They're like a cancer. And, and you know, the problems that you have with this police chief, everybody should listen because he's now connected well with the prosecutor, with the sheriff, and he, he thinks he's running this town. I don't know, where is he tonight? Usually he shows up. 
and sits there laughing and texting. I miss him. Uh, so that's it. This comment is for the public to hear because I don't expect anything from this council. Thank you. Okay. I need a motion to close the public participation. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to take the listed resolutions as a consent agenda with the exceptions of 128-19 and 129-19. So moved. Second. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. I need a motion to take 128-19. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Jane. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? Yes. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. I need a motion on Resolution 129-19. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Vogt? Yes. Dr. Selly? I'm saying. Mrs. Wittes? Yes. Madam, Madam, 155, 156, and 157 to the agenda? Yes. So do we need a motion to oh. add them to the agenda and then a vote? I don't believe that they, yeah. Am I? They're am online. I in, with, in regards they are, to the add-ons. They, are they yeah. on the, yeah. are they? They are on. on. They, they are, are on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, then we don't need mm -hmm. them. I'm sorry, they're not on the one that I would give them. Thank right. you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, I'd like to give each council person and the mayor the opportunity to address the audience. Um, Councilman Dangler. Yes, just to uh, elaborate a little more in regards to the uh, summer appointment for the youth, um, I did check with recreation and 90% of the, the jobs that were uh, given out were given out to our students. Uh, the lifeguard is, is an issue, but it's not a, because we don't want to hire. It is, you know, you have to certainly be certified. Um, we do have a junior lifeguard program, but and that'll take time to build up. So, um, I did again. We, we we are trying to and cognizant of that. And as far as Department of Public Works, again, um, all applicants that um, they receive uh, for um, from students from Long Branch, they were fortunate enough to get to uh, get jobs. Um, so, um, that is my passion, as you know, Mr. Grant, and to the audience. But I just want everyone to know that that's. That's where we're at. We did look into it. We didn't want to keep it as a spin, but just to just to make sure that things are um, um, there are opportunities for you. And that's all I have to say. Of, of course, everyone have a very very nice uh, Fourth of July um, holiday. Ocean Fest is coming up, so come on out and have a good time. And as always, enjoy the Fourth here in Long Branch. Thank you, Councilman Vieira. Yes. Good evening. Thank you for coming. And first, I would like to thank uh, Joanne for her smile, for being employee of the month, because she is great. It's people like that that we need in our town, and she's a great worker. Secondly, I'd like to do a little clarification on last, last um, council meeting that we had. Uh, Mr. Lepore asked me if I uh, met with um, Safaric, and I said no. What I did, uh, they asked me a few questions about their building, and I did not have the answers for those questions. So I arranged for him to meet with our planner at the time, Carl Turner. So that's what I did. I arranged for them to meet with our planner. He had the answers for them. And I'll, I'll do that for anybody that comes and asks me for any information. If I can't give it to them, I'll lead them to the right people. So that's the clarification from two weeks ago. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Councilwoman, vote. So I just want to follow up on uh, what Anita said in terms of a very important opportunity that we have. Anita and I had a, a conversation yesterday about a campaign that's going on that is called Every Kid Counts. Um, and I'm going to, going to check with the mayor if it's okay for me to put these postcards downstairs. 
um, for anybody that wants to take any action on it. And just as Anita explained, it is an attempt to try to get more money for our special education program. So it's very important to every every town, and certainly it's important for Long Branch to step up and and um, you know show that we support this kind of action. It's very very simple in terms of what you can do to support it, which is to go to the website Every Kid Counts nj.com. That's all you need to do and sign up saying that you support the idea of more funding for special education courses, uh, programs rather. Every kid counts nj.com. So Anita, thank you for, for bringing that up and hopefully we can make this successful. So thank you to everyone. Um, I'll uh, repeat what uh, Councilman Dangler said. Great 4th of July, come out to Ocean Fest, uh, and we'll have uh, a good time celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Sally. So I, <clears throat> we end our first year as the new city council. It's a sad night, and it's a happy night. A sad night because we're losing a great president. She led us through the first year and did a great job. It's not easy, believe me, to run the agenda, run the meeting, and answer all the questions in between. So for that, Rose, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to Billy, I say congratulations, and I'm here to help you any way I can. It's been, been a good ride this first year. I think we've accomplished a lot of things, <clears throat> some good, I don't think there's too many bad, but I would like to say it's been a pleasure working with this council for the first year, and let's go forward with the next three. And don't forget the 4th of July and Ocean Fest. Guess where it is? It's on the boardwalk. So I'm sure it's, we're going to have a nice day, and I encourage everybody to go out and enjoy the wonderful weather and our beautiful boardwalk. Thank you and good night and happy fourth. Thank you. Okay. Mayor Fong? Mm -hmm. I would also like to say thank you, Council President Wittes, thank you. for the last year and good luck to uh, Councilman Dangler for the coming year. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who came out to our coffee with the Mayor and Council event last night at the Elbron Firehouse. We're going to continue uh, our next coffee with the mayor event in September at the Bucky James Center. We don't have a date yet, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. Uh, Eat to the Beat started last week at the Sunday Bands by the Beach Concert Series. Uh, picnic tables and summer games are available at these concerts for the public to enjoy, so please come by and support the local food establishments in West End. Uh, tables are available uh, as early as 530. Um, it's already been mentioned, but annual Ocean Fest is next week, July 4th, next Thursday. It's a great event that the Greater Chamber of Commerce and the City of Long Ranch hosts with the help of many other sponsors. So thank you to them, and we hope to see you all there. If you need any information on that, it's uh, please visit OceanFestNewJersey.com for more information. And the final thought was that our first Neighborhood Fun Day uh, it was a real success, a huge success this past Friday at Jerry Morgan Park. Thank you to everyone for joining us, to our sponsors. And the next fun day is July 12th uh, outside the West End Arts Center from 5 to 8 p.m. So please join us for some family, free family fun, slip and slide, rock wall, DJ, some treats and more. So thank you all for coming this evening and for your comments. And have a great 4th of July to you and your families. Thank you. But since tonight is my last council meeting as president, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank the administration and our city employees for all their hard work this past year. And also the citizens of Long Branch who believe in us and provide us with unending support during our first year in office. Without all of you, we would have not been able to accomplish all that we have thus far. In keeping with our campaign, 
promised Long Branch first, we now televise our council and workshop meetings, increase the use of social media, revise our website to become more user-friendly and provide even more services to you. We reduced the property tax rate, provided free parking to residents on the beachfront, implemented Shop Long Branch. We now have an employee recognition program in place. Bulk and brush pickup revisions were made to clean our city. An initiative to address the opioid crisis has been started. Town meetings and coffees were held to discuss issues and or concerns you may have had and also provided us with the opportunity to get to know you better. COA was initiated to provide affordable house, housing funding from projects that do not contain an affordable housing component. Working with our Envir Environmental Commission on the ban of the use of plastics and tree conservation. The creation of an abandoned properties list. Improvement of parks and beaches. Re-implementation of Sustainable New Jersey. Creation of a volunteer committee. Citywide fund days. Enhancement of our library programs. The first female judge was appointed in the history of Long Branch. We now have what we believe to be the first or one of the first handicapped accessible beaches in the state of New Jersey. Recognition of various organizations and committees within our community each month who go above and beyond to help others. Just to name a few. And I would be remiss if we didn't thank all of our commissions and committees who volunteer and dedicate themselves to better our community every day. Thank you. Our work is far from being co completed, but I am confident that under the new leadership of Councilman Dangler's president, our mayor, council administration, and staff, we will continue to work hard for you to make Long Branch an amazing place in which to live. And lastly, I would like to wish Councilman Bill Dangler a happy birthday this weekend. Happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening and thank you. But and before we adjourn, uh, the whole council uh, and administration <laughs> would like to do a little bit more of a thanks uh, thank you. to, to uh, our council president for the great leadership that she provided this past year. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I need a motion to close. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.